Welcome to Dumb Thick, where you're dumb and we're thick. On today's episode, we're going to be doing the great debate. Roll the intro. Hey, I'm Tell, recording from Auburn, Alabama. Hey, this is Grayson, recording from Florence, Alabama. Hey, this is Brandon, recording from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And this is Ben, recording from Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, guys, we have an episode for you guys. Uh, I hope it goes well. We really have no clue. It is an idea that I've kind of been developing the past couple months based off of, we basically we argue all the time and it's so fun. So why not like conceal it all into one you know, debate scenario, and it's very topical because of these great presidential debates we've been having. What do you guys think? How how are we feeling about the potential of this idea? I got a title for it. Yeah? All right. The Dumb Thick Master Debaters. <laughs> Honestly? Oh, golly. <laughs> golly. <laughs> but, like, hey, if, as long as you take time to say it right, it's clean. <laughs> I mean, now that it's, uh, it's, it's, that's funny. We could use it. We'll discuss yeah. after the pod, I guess. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Uh, we I figured also, it was all right to throw out there. I want to go ahead and, uh, we can make that a debate topic. Is wanna, that a good title or not? <laughs> yeah, there it is. I want to shout out our moderator for the day. Yeah. Brandon is here. He is going to be judging for us. A lot of you may or may not have heard uh, one of our most popular podcasts, which was all about our experiences at Grayson's wedding, and it was me, Tell, and Brandon there. Brandon, how have you been yeah. doing for the past couple months since we've last heard from you? I've been doing good. I've been missing being on the podcast. I'm really happy that you guys had me back on. It's really fun to listen to y'all, so it'll be fun to be in on the jokes and all that tonight. Yeah, thanks so for being here, I'm looking man. forward to yeah. it. And as long as it's nothing like the real presidential debates, I think this will go nice. So, <laughs> so well, Thanks for joining us, uh, Brandon. Yeah, I will say thank you guys. I've heard some some listeners have trouble distinguishing between my voice and Brandon's voice. So if if you're concerned about that, I'm going to be the only one arguing. So Brandon's never going to be arguing. So if you're also if you can't distinguish between our voices, that might be helpful. Dumb thick on YouTube. We're going to have the video up. Yeah, I was going to. Oh, yeah, I was about to shout that's that out. Also very good. YouTube.com slash dumb thick will have the video posted. If you really want us to see, see how intense we are in our faces and look into my eyes when I tell you how great I'm talking about, you know, arguing. Feel free to uh, look, check that out, youtube.com slash dumb thick. Let's go ahead and jump into the rules because it's, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible, but you know, it might get a little convoluted here and there because it's not a typical debate, right? There's three of us and we're only going to be debating two people at a time. So we're going to start off, Brandon is going to think of a number one through 100 and all three of us, me, Grace and tell are going to think of a number, try to guess what that is. The two closest are going to be the first ones to debate. The one who was closest to the number is the one who will get the, the coin. So where the coin goes into it is we wanted to randomly find a way to pick a debate. Brandon will assign the two topics. One will be heads, one will be tails, and whoever is closest to Brandon's original number will be the one will be decided on, you know, whatever the coin decides, if it's tails, whatever the tails one was assigned, they'll be arguing that point. Moving forward, they'll debate. Each person will get two person two minutes to debate, and then there will be a three minute discussion, arguing, whatever you want to do, and then Brandon will make his decision from there. And then the person who is sitting out will replace the winner of that round, and then they'll go through it again. The loser of the last round will now get control of the coin, so if it lands on heads, they will pick the one that was heads, and it'll become clearer as we go, hopefully. Um, and uh, it's first to three wins, so the the first person to win three debates uh, will get to take home the crown of the master debater. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful now. Be careful. I don't think I want that crown. Okay. I don't want that anywhere near me. Now, did I do a good job? Did I miss anything, guys, or are we ready to just jump into it? I say let's go. I think we're let's good. Let's do it. Wait, All right. Can I say something really quick? Yeah, go for I it. I didn't realize the Craig thing, but it's it's the thing on discord i just got that so that's <laughs> hey, I'm, hey I mean, now, I'm, I'm on the inside look you don't know what you're talking about craig is 
he's near and dear to our hearts, but he just he doesn't know when to get out of the call. Amen. And so you just don't don't be giving our secrets out. Craig is real, <laughs> and he's near and dear to my heart, even though he's a little. They turd. Craig and, <laughs> Craig and Grayson have a mixed mixed yeah. uh, history. We have a we have a very yeah. Craig and Gag there. Anyways, we'll get into that's a whole. We got a whole another podcast in the future. <laughs> Just All Greg right. and Craig. Let's let's jump we'll into it later. The, let's jump into the debate. <laughs> Brandon, have we even said who Greg is? <laughs> I don't even no, know. The no, we're not discussing it now. Is. We are not we're discussing Greg. it now. Okay. We're not that's discussing a whole, it. Now. That's, that's a whole other chapter. You'll meet Greg in you a might, future you podcast. Might have already met Greg. Who knows? But. All right, <laughs> let's move on. Brandon, have you picked a number from one through one hundred? I have. All right. Tell, what's your number? Uh, 81. Grayson? Uh, 92. All right, I'm going to go 80. <laughs> no, okay, you can't so- do that. Why not? Remember before, we didn't, we didn't explain this to the people, but this was just between us four that we had to pick a number that was four away from the other person. Okay, 75. I'm just making yeah. the point. Everything with below you guys, I'm going to get. Yeah. So what is the... All right, what, what's what's the, the number, Brennan? 17. All right. All right. <laughs> so it didn't Ooh. matter. All right, so that means it's going to be me and Tell debating the first time, uh, first round. Since I was the one closest to the number... Brandon is going to assign heads or tails. If you're watching the video, you can see I have a heads or tails app on my phone that we're going to flip. Uh, Brandon will assign, and whatever my phone lands on is what I will be debating. Tell will be debating the other point. Brandon, what are we doing? This is probably my favorite topic, and I really want to start off with a bang. So I want to know who would win in a fight, Tell or a mountain lion? Ben, okay. I think I would assign tail as heads and the mountain lion as tails. Okay. So whatever this lands on, tail's head, tail is heads, <laughs> mountain lion is yes. tails. <laughs> yeah. My head's on the lion. Or is I like the your head's on the lion. Head on the line. So yeah. I'm going to be arguing mountain lion, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Easy win. All Easy right. win. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so do we want to. You do guys like don't even know. You don't even know yeah. what's going on. So Grayson and Brandon, you can discuss. Maybe tell the history of this argument. All right, Brandon, right, you, you want me to start? On the clock. Yeah, let's yeah. just. All right, so, so just, there's a long, there's a yeah. long-standing debate in our friend group about. Tell has this inferiority complex. I don't know. Is that what you call it, Brandon? Superiority Based, complex. No, it's superiority. Yes, yeah, superiority complex. I wish you had an inferiority complex. <laughs> I don't think out. Uh, but. Uh, because of that, that we've we've often I think there was a story one time about it was about a mountain lion and a guy and a guy got away from it or something and so we started talking about it at at some point and it just sparked this long debate that Tell truly believed that he could win a fight between a mountain lion if it came down to survival. Is there anything right. else to add, Brandon? Well, I just mean, no one else thinks that. We all are yeah, thinking that if, we, if we went toe to toe with the mountain but, line, it's over. But hey, but we'll save it for the debate. We'll, we'll save it all for the debate. We'll see. We'll see yeah. what they have to say. All right, themselves. guys, your time's up. So I've got two minutes on the clock. Ben, your two minutes starts. I think, I think it's Tell first. Oh, is it Tell first? Tell was the heads. Tell was the heads. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Tell. I don't know Your if two that minute starts. I don't know oh. if that hurt. I didn't have that up to my mic. Hey, so. shut up! It's it's no, my restart, turn. Restart, restart. No, it's, it, it's no, my it's turn okay. to debate. I calm started. calm hey, down. Excuse me, I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. <laughs> okay. so, uh, Whenever you start, tell us start the timer. All right, ready? Go. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, my thinking with a mountain lion, yes, it is a strong beast. But you know who else is a strong beast? No, I'm kidding. That's not it. <laughs> Please, no. That's not a valid point. But the thing is, <laughs> I, I am, like, I would say that I am physically able to fight off this mountain lion. I, I am stronger than I look, I would say. Um, I'm an outdoorsman. I think I could use my surroundings. Now, one of the things with the mountain lion, it's got, yes, it's got its claws and its teeth. But I've got all other surroundings that I can use to my advantage. You know, the mountain lion is not going to pick up a rock 
and use that. You know, I can pick up a good rock and throw it at him. I've got ranged weaponry. I can pick up a rock and bash its head. You know, I've got all these things, you know, I could take a stick and hit it. You know, um, I can, you know, I, I probably have longer reach. I can kick them. Um, one thing is that I'm confident going in, not that I could kill the mountain lion, but the mountain lion is only going to attack me to either protect itself if it feels in danger or if it's hungry enough. Okay. So if it attacks me, all I have to do is be a bigger threat than in, than it first anticipated. Okay, so if I'm such a big threat to it, it's going to say, this guy's too much, you know, this isn't worth my time, I'm going to dip out. So all I have to do is scare it off. And me going in with the mentality that I can do this gives me a greater chance. What I keep saying to the guys about this debate is that if I go in thinking I've got no chance against a mountain lion, if I get attacked by one, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to die. But I go right, in so. thinking I can do it, so I'm going to do it. All right. Good statement. All right, Ben. Your two minutes starts whenever you do. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So it's the, it's the classic man versus beast dilemma. Can a person, it's not about necessarily tell. We're talking just about a person and a mountain lion. Is there a chance? Okay. So... Let's talk about just some some things about a mountain lion. A mountain lion is born with certain strengths, certain weapons on them, such as giant claws, giant teeth, all of all of these things. It's got big muscles. Are you aware that a mountain lion is 120 to 220 pounds? 220 pounds. Bigger than you tell. And it is about 7.9 feet long if it's a male or 6.7 feet long if it's a female. Yeah, you would lose to a girl mountain lion as well, Tell. Okay, so my thing is, is this survival argument is so stupid. You're not going to be able to hurt a mountain lion. You have claws, which are fingernails that you, claw, you, you file down so that you don't scr- scratch yourself when you're sleeping. It's the stupid, the thought that you think you can throw a rock and it's going to think, oh, I'm scared. It's going to run away. Absolutely not. Tell thinks in general, he is smarter and he is faster and he is stronger than all of these things. And we've seen this time and time again in this podcast. No way can he do this. Mentality is a stupid argument. If you can't do something, you cannot do it. If you are not able to fight 100 men with guns and swords, even though you think you can do it, that doesn't mean you can do it. So where does that line stop where, oh, mentality, mentality, I can do it if I think I can do it. That is just not how life works. I know that you think, oh, big bad. Yeah, if I think I can do it, then I can do it. And that's really cute. And I'm glad you liked Thomas the Train Engine growing up, but that's not how real life works. Time's up, Ben. All right, debaters, fantastic opening statement. Yeah, thank you, you guys. Yeah, you guys have some some points you're probably going to make to each other. So your three minutes debating, free open discussion, no limits for three minutes. That time starts now. Sweet. I would like to respond. All right. So (laughs) first, you say, is there a chance that a human could defeat a mountain lion? Yes, there is because how this debate started was a human defeated a mountain lion with a weapon mountain lion with a weapon him. with a weapon with a weapon what's to say i don't have a weapon do you ever have a weapon on you if i'm in the woods i often have a weapon didn't this guy get attacked when he was on a run like in a city or something on the you know like no he was he was on a trail i i'm not so sure about that he was that. on a trail it was in colorado all right so yes there is a chance so that are we you would talking first of all are we talking about you before. with a weapon or you without a weapon because every time we've ever talked about it it's been tell i could throw a rock you didn't bring I up think a weapon i could do it you didn't I, bring look, up a, a knife look, in your first argument hey, you only did it after i said something about it that is because i'm confident i could do it without a weapon 
with a weapon, that's tough. I could kill that mountain lion. Okay, so now you say that mountain lions can weigh up to 220 pounds. That's the top tier. That's a heavyweight champion. Okay, I'm not the heavyweight champion of the humans. Average mountain lions for males weigh 125 pounds. Females weigh 100 pounds. Do you know how much I weigh? 200 pounds. I've got a lot of weight. Is on that the, the average line. though? Because on the statistic that mm-hmm. I'm looking at, 120 pounds is the bottom. It's the least amount of a yes, mountain lion. I'm so on, I think I'm you want to check your stats on, on that. On average, adult male mountain lions in British Columbia weigh 125 pounds. Oh, so we're in British Columbia for this? All right. If we go further south, they're going to get smaller. Are we sure about that? Yes. Have you? Do you know anything about animals? Go go up to Alaska. All the animals are massive. Moose, grizzly bears, polar bears, walruses. They get bigger. When you come down to the equator, they're all small. So if I'm fighting a mountain lion in in Auburn, Alabama, I'm sorry, is, it's going to be a small mountain lion. Is Africa in, around the equator at all? Uh, I'm not good with geography. Where where why are we in Africa? There's I'm just no saying. I'm just saying. In Africa. Are we talking about statistics on animals being bigger? Because I can think of lions. Elephants. If we're just talking about regional whatevers, we, uh, we that is not a valid argument to say. Oh, only big animals live near no, the equator. I'm not like saying, that no, is silly. It's, it's a biological thing that if you have more surface area, you will release more heat. So if you become bigger, you have more volume and less surface area. So you retain heat. So the bigger the animals. They live up. Big animals have to live. Listen, we could no, argue this all day. Be smaller. Whether so, it's okay, smaller or not that. does not affect any of the points that I have made. Okay, I'm just I'm just responding to your comments. Mentality, gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. Unfortunately, your time is up. However, I'm having a really difficult time picking someone. I could. However, I would like to see this debate continue for another minute or so. What do you guys say? Yeah, I mean, it's I'm fine. For it. All right. I want to set an ambiguous time, and y'all go for it. Okay. And let's see what y'all come up with. For mentality, that's not me saying that I can do it. Mentality, Even though that's what you said. Thinking, no, that is my mentality. But just because I say I can does not mean I can. You are correct. But it gives me an edge. It gives me an edge. The mountain lion goes in thinking the same thing. If we both go in with the same mentality of, I can do this, who is the stronger willpower? Animals are dumb. I have strong willpower. I can overcome this I would argue that in the you, mind game and physically. I would argue that you're giving up by admitting that you might not be able to do it and that you have to have the mentality is giving up the fact that you could, you would be able to do it. You're saying no. already that I have to tell myself I can do it or else I can't do it. And you just admitted in your reasoning there that you, even though you couldn't, might not be able to do it, you have to tell yourself. And in doing so, at least part of you thinks that you can't do it. No. Okay. So the mountain lion, if it goes in thinking I'm going to lose this fight, it's going to lose the fight. All I'm saying is if you go in thinking you're going to win the fight, you have a chance. I'm saying I have a, a better chance than most humans. Yeah, but we're talking about like zero times two is still zero. So like, you know, we're, we're talking about like things in nature that like, yeah, sure. Like a bird thinks that it can fly faster than something that's chasing it, but it can't fly faster than everything that's chasing it, buddy. I'm sorry. That's just not how nature works. I don't, I don't know what you're doing with math here, but... Yeah, I'm so sorry to throw the throw math in here, throw you off. I'm just saying, I don't I don't know how much time uh you're giving us on this, but I think I've argued every single point to everything that I can say about it. Tell? Okay. I'm, I don't tell do you have anything I'm to respond that It's from great the, from the evidence that I presented. I'm not I'm not saying give me a weapon I ha- I could kill this mountain lion. I'm not I'm I'm just going to scare it off is all I need to do. So if I wound it in any way or appear intimidating to where it did not see me as intimidating as before, I've won the battle because it's not going to waste its time with me. That's how the 
That's how the the food system the food system works. And I will say as my closing argument that Tell has not laid out any significant ways to harm a mountain lion except for the knife thing that he brought up after the fact, after he said this has happened once before with a knife. And but beforehand he said, I could do it with a rock, I could do it with my feet, whatever it takes. I think that shows you right there exactly what he thinks. You know, he he kind of yes, makes that, up that shows all it is my... to him is mentality. He thinks he can do it, and that's great that you think you can do it. That does not mean that you can do it. That shows that I have a plan. I, I think we're going in circles to here. Defeat the mountain we have to cut it off. All right. Tell you got one closing statement. Ben had his closing statement. You got one more thing. I'm just saying his I'm mentality that I could do this. Yeah, his mentality and says that he can. Physically, average mountain lion, I have more weight on it. I can hold it down. Ooh, also, I also have dog, another point. No, no, no. All right, here. My dog weighs more than the average mountain lion. And I wrestle him every single day. Do you think mountain lions have a lot of fat and a lot of stuff like that? Or are they like pure muscle? Just, just a question. Just a question. Because I know that, that was you're my not closing statement. I, I know that you're not pure muscle. I'm just <laughs> I, I don't know about mountain lions. You know, I would think they would be, but well. all right, let's go ahead and cut it off there. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys some more time because I think it was a, a really strong debate. Um, I definitely my opinion swayed back and forth quite a bit. I think you guys, you know, I was leaning towards Tell, and I was leaning towards Ben, and I was leaning towards Tell's. You know, so back and forth. So really good job. Um, I cannot believe that this is who I'm going to say wins, but I think Tell argued a little bit is better. Is he lagging out for you guys? Yeah, he just froze. <laughs> what? The you, <laughs> you, you said <laughs> I think, and then you cut off. Oh, no. I'm sorry. What's uh, he think? I, I can't believe it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What do you think? Tell, I think, won that debate. Oh, Yes. So tell us your thought process in that. So I understand his mentality. Um, I think Ben did. I think when, when you really had me, Ben, was when you were talking about just your makeup of a, of a human as an animal. Of We don't really have weapons. We don't have sharp teeth or, or claws. However, you know, tells combat with that was your intellect and your intelligence and yeah. using your surroundings. Humans are top of so the that food kept chain that, in nature. Anyway. Yeah, that. That that brought balance to that, but what, honestly, what really I think saved Tell was the end was putting it into perspective about being able to control that big dog um, pretty well, which a mountain lion is fierce. But I don't know if you guys have ever been around a uh, um, crap. What are they called, Tell? I totally am blanking Malamute. here. A mask, a Malamute. Those things are monsters. So you're saying I lost so, because he can control a trained dog? All right. Well, I mean, cool. Whatever. <laughs> I think that's in. I mean, if we're talking about just arguments, I think I made so many good arguments. Tell made well, one. Hey, hey, he made let's one. talk about the thing. We're talking about the debate. Who had the harder topic in most people's eyes? I did. Oh, so, so you're admitting that's you admitting no, no, no. right there that it's not hey, typical no, 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 no. that a person hey, would win. Ben, Ben, you cannot win any more any longer. I, I mean, I'm just debate. saying. This is you a civil it. conversation now. This yeah, is that's you admitting it right there. You had the uphill well, battle because hey, you please, are already we're at a disadvantage. A civil conversation. Ben. I am too. We're I'm going to talk about. I had the the harder topic, the harder stance on the topic, because most people are ob- obviously sorry, obviously going to assume that a mountain lion is going to win. Okay, so I had the the weaker argument to go off of, but I presented it in a way that Brandon was going back and forth because my mm-hmm. argument was so strong. Yeah, your argument the of the stance. one the one thing you said, that was an argument. So let the record show that while this debate has been going on for literally years, I have always been on the side of Tell would lose. However, yes. I did really think that he presented a strong argument tonight. So that's, that's why I I'm gave him at. the points. All right, so just well, to say that I don't know what to I would say. lean towards Ben. I would love but Ben. Please thank you. people watching and listening to this, please tell me what you think. Because <laughs> well, I promise is, you most people are on my side. I right, understand right, gentlemen, that's gentlemen. what I just said. What I'm saying is my argument, my stance on that subject is the weaker 
side of it. No, I'm I know that's what you're saying. I'm saying I did a better job defending just then as well, and most people would agree. But oh no, we're uh we're gonna move on, Brandon. Yep. So that means Ben will be debating Grayson in the next round. Um, so the topic that I want you guys to do is the movie theater being a perfect first date or not. So heads will be movie theater being the perfect date. Heads, yes. Tails, Tails will, will be, be it's good. Okay. And then since I just lost, whatever shows up yep. on the phone is what I'll be arguing. Yep. All right. It's flipping. And it is heads. So I will be saying that movie theaters are a perfect first date. All right, so you guys have about one minute to prepare your thoughts, and then we'll get going. Tell you really impressed me. I gotta say, Thank I hope you. I didn't anger your fans by making that decision. Oh. I, I was really shocked that I made that decision, honestly. Yeah, me too. Because I try not you. to come in. I try not to come in biased, but I mean, I really just didn't think you had it in you. Thank to, you to defeat the mountain lion, but you convinced me otherwise. So well, thank you. Yeah, I'm very honored about that. What? What's your thought on the movie? Th- well, I guess so I can't ask you that because you're that would then show your bias. So I can't say that. I guess I I'll reveal like, I'll reveal my thought after they've argued, just so, so yeah they can't. Well, steal I mean, my I have a thought. Yeah, I have a bias for this one as well. But I mean, the first one should be proof that I'm right. not going to pick based off of yeah. that. Yeah, that was a good so first inter- topic. I thought you know to get well, things started I, I, to show your unbiased. Yeah, well, I, and I hated to extend it, but it was just too dang good. <laughs> it was good TV. Yeah. All right. Gentlemen, I hope you got your notes prepared. Um, we are ready to start the first debate. Since it landed on heads, does that mean, Ben, you go yeah, first? I start. I start. All right, Ben, you have two minutes to tell us why the movie theater is the perfect first date. Your time starts now. Okay, so like all of you have, I've been known to take a pretty girl to – a movie from time to time. And I would honestly say that movie theaters are the perfect first date. When, especially when we're talking about a first date, there's a lot of pressure that go into a first date. You want to make sure that what you're doing is fun and you're having a good time, but you're also kind of nervous, especially if it's somebody you don't know as well. Maybe you met them on Tinder. Maybe you just have talked to him a couple times What do you go out and do? And I think the combination of dinner plus a movie is the perfect thing. Because with a just a dinner, you're saying, okay, well, that was good, but can we do something else? Is there is there a little bit more that we could do to go out and and, you know, because maybe dinner wasn't enough. And with the movie, it is the perfect talking point. Afterwards, you can kind of go on a walk depending on where you go. Like for us in our hometown. In the area, Madison has Bridge Street, so go to the movie and then walk around. And if it's at night, it's lit nice, and there's stores, and it's really romantic. If you go at a time like Christmas or a a time that is uh, decorated really well. So that is just is very, very intuitive for a conversation, a low-pressure conversation about the movie. My other uh, point that I would want to make in this two minutes is that there are all kinds of genres to experience in a movie. And if you and the other person really like a certain kind of movie, you can really tell right away that y'all are vibing and it's a good like, okay, okay, well, we get along with this. What else do we get along with? And just every time you go, it can be a different experience. If you go to a restaurant or, or some kind of other date, it's, it's different because maybe there's a different person, but you're, you're eating the same food. Maybe you're talking the same kind of ways, the movie theater, you can go to a different movie every single time. And it guarantees that you have a different topic after every single time. And you also, you know, little things here and there holding hands. Did it go off? I didn't hear it. Yeah, it did. Just, just go ahead and wrap it up. No, no, no. I mean, we can move on and I, I don't have to make a closing argument right now. All right. Very good argument, Ben. Um, Grayson, your turn to argue that the movie theater is not the perfect first date. Your two minutes start now. All right. So I have a few thoughts about this. So my 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 first my first thoughts were the first date is all about getting to know somebody. Um, you you really use that as a gauge to decide if you want to go on a second date or even possibly uh, further on than that. You know, a lot to, a lot of the times. The first date is uh, it's a it's a very good indicator 
of of how things are going to go. And a lot of people, um, I would say most people base how they're going to treat the relationship off of that first date. And so I just don't think that getting to know each other is a good place to do in a dark room that is loud. It doesn't it doesn't permit any kind of uh, visual uh, aspects to the relationship, which matter a lot. Um, people want to act like it doesn't, but it really does. Your visual taste really are going to influence how you, you know, can, you know, their mannerisms, the way they move, the way they talk. Those are things that you either fall in love with or you fall out of love with rather quickly. And that's not facilitated by a movie. Um, I think that, uh, that if you, if she was to hate the movie, you know, if it was just something that she didn't like, and because you haven't gotten to know her, this is the first time you're getting to know her. That's the first date ruined the chance of you getting to go on more dates and even possibly having a long-term relationship is ruined just because of a silly movie. So, you know, I agree that it's a great date. That's not, that's not the debate though. The debate is whether it's a great or perfect in exact verbatim, perfect first date. So it has nothing to do with more dates. We, we, we can throw that off the table right now because it's the first date. And I believe that a movie just doesn't facilitate a first date very well because of how important it is in the gauge of the relationship. And I think that's all I have to say. All right. Well, you have three seconds left, so good timing, Grayson. Um, so just I'll make a couple comments. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that, but I'll go ahead and do it. Um, before the open discussion so ben you talked about a dinner in a movie um i'm not sure if that quite applies to the situation so that that, i actually have um, that on the counter i was going to say we got to throw that out because that's not even in the question at all dinner has nothing to do with this this is all about a movie and it's also has nothing to do with second dates or third dates or you mentioned dates in general it's not about dates this is wait is this starting in our reaction time because i would like to okay yeah so my this thing has is, nothing to do with third dates or anything that. like you said. First date, that. perfect first date. I understand Throw that. that out. My my point with that is a perfect first date has to lead to a second date, a third date, or if you don't want it to, off of what you heard on the first date, you have to know that on a first date. And I think you can kind of pick that up on a first date. That's why you bring up the second or third date in this conversation. Not because you're going to go to a movie. Sure, you're going to go to a movie again. But it is absolutely important to the point. But how, but how are you, how are you going to have a successful first date if you're already focusing on the second and third date? You're not going to be focusing on the right then and there. And you're not going to have enough to go off to even have a second and third. Because you were already so focused on basing it on the I'm confused on right how you think that I was. I'm just saying at the... We're talking about from an outsider point of view. When you're in the date, I'm of course it's going well. You're at a movie, you're having fun, you're talking about it afterwards. But after the fact, it, you can look at it and say, was this a good first date? Was this the perfect first date? And when you think about that, you're going to be thinking, well, do I want to go on another date? And there, it tells you a lot with it. Another thing about yes, the movie, but that's after the date. Listen, this is about the perfect first date. And I think I've made my also, point very clear on also that. You made a, you also, you made a point about it being romantic. And I just want to know what is so romantic about a dark, loud room for a first date. Well, it depends date. on what kind you of have, movie you you're going to. You can't get to know each other. If you're, but any movie is going to be loud. They turn, that, they turn it way up. If you're at an action and movie, bright, 100%. Have you ever been to a, like a rom-com or something? Maybe it's a movie that your girl that you're going with is so excited to see. And it's, maybe it's it is, super maybe sad. Maybe it's not. I, it's super, like, maybe it's like, oh, it's just so beautiful. Oh, this is so romantic that's super good that's yeah what if she does it what if she hates rom-coms and then i go back to my original point that i made that the first date could be ruined and 100 yeah, percent doesn't like that, that movie i want to hear from ben on that that's, that's so a really valid point that grayson made i think it gives you the opportunity to kind of show who you are because you can ask well what movie do you want to go see if you're going to a rom-com and she doesn't like it first of all why second of all you weren't a good date <laughs> Because you're taking her to a movie she doesn't want to go to. Part of the fun of the but discussion... You, you haven't got... Excuse me, I would like to talk. Part of the fun of the discussion is that you're deciding what does this person like in their movies. And you kind of get to feel that out from the very beginning, which is so good. Because you know a lot about someone. If, if they're going to a movie that you might not like... Well, maybe that's not too good because they're not thinking about, right. well, they won't like this. And another point that I would like to make is... 
maybe they don't get to talk as much. Maybe not. But we're talking about maybe first impressions, first dates. And when you're leaving that first date and you've done a good job with a movie theater, you've picked a good movie, you've had good conversations afterwards, maybe you, you've held her hands walking down the street or whatever you do when you're done with a movie date, you come across looking really good. And for a first date, that is the the bottom. That is the goal, right? You want to have a good conversation, yes. and you want it to lead to <clears throat> more things. And I think right, that so is so response easy to, to that. So I is, want Ben. Ben, you've you've had your you spoken your piece, Grayson. Just a couple sentences on some closing remarks, please. Yeah, uh, I guess just to respond um, to that, I would say it's. For a first date, you need to get to know each other so that the second date can be a movie theater because all the points that you made were valid about movies being great. They could make you look really great. But the thing is, for a first date, it's risk versus reward. And there's so much more risk, her not liking the movie or just just all these little things that couldn't be right. Are you not getting to know her right? You know, you might not even know that you're wasting your time on the first date because you didn't even get to know her. You just went and sat in a dark, loud room and then maybe you talked after Maybe, you know, it depends on what the plans were. Mm -hmm. But I just think that a movie theater right. does not facilitate getting to and know I, somebody, and that's the most important thing okay. on the first date. And I would right. just like to, to say as my final thing, <laughs> I think, I've I said think that's I've, it. I've that's appointed it. to no, all that. No, that's it. No. I've appointed Here, all that yeah, already. No, that's it. That's it. That's, it. that's all. You decision. said your closing statement, and then Grayson yeah. got to make his closing statement. Yeah. Okay, Brandon, this what's your decision? This is kind of starting to mirror the presidential debate, so y'all need to take a, take a beta blocker, all right? Um. So, Ooh. do you, would you like me to give my reasoning or like what you just? Yeah, what do you just, want me to do? just tell us. I mean, just tell say us who, won, who yeah. won and tell Why? us the reasoning. Yeah. All right. I think Ben won that debate. Thank you. Um. And again, this was not my original position. I think what really won me over was Ben talking about. Obviously, you're going to agree on a movie, and that helps you pick out what kind of person the other is. That's and all I was also, saying. Grayson at the end so, was saying yeah. stuff I was already, I had already said, like I'd well, already argued so that. The, the yeah, it was a counter the argument. Most, the, yeah. The thing that sold me the most was what gotcha. happens, you know, the movie brings you typically to a really good spot. So you might, you know, typically that's not all you do on a date. So what it does is it's a really good anchor point on how you conduct the date. And then also something for me, I've always struggled with is, treating a date like an interview. So if you have something really lighthearted to discuss, this is something I never thought about. You have something lighthearted to discuss, then afterwards that leads to really great conversation without a lot of, um, uh, <laughs> that leads without a lot of um, issues. You're not having hard debates or anything. You're talking about, you know, what part of Inside Out did you cry at? You know, like, yeah. yeah. So I uh, see, I agree Dude, with all that. I, I actually, this, uh... I was surprised. Like I was really <laughs> hoping I would get the the movie theater. Uh, what? Can you not hear? Uh, no, no, no. Y'all are talking lagging. over each other. You go, Grayson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. So I was just saying, my wife and I, our very first date in high school was at a movie theater, and I thought it was a perfect first date. We still talk about it. So it was very hard for me to step outside Yo. of that, and I think I did a decent job. Yeah. Can I? Can I just something say I didn't believe at all. Dude, I've been trying. Like to I just wanted to throw in, that out there because I everything. Well, I was Vincent the one was arguing great. this. I, agree I just want to say. I just want to say, no offense to you and your your wife, Grayson. First date at the movies is garbage. <laughs> I do not yeah, like first you. date as a movie. Yeah. I love it, dude. I you could both of you conv <laughs> completely convinced me that that's what you thought because I was like yeah. I think a first date for a movie is terrible. Like first date needs to be short. You don't want to spend so long with them. Dinner in a movie is way too much. That's way too many hours for a first date. Like my thing is uh, my brother-in-law told me this is that first date you need to do something active so that you can talk to the person because in the movie you can't talk now mm -hmm. ben likes to talk during movies so maybe <laughs> yeah, it would be yeah. good for ben but you know if you do something active you can talk to the person and then you can also if it's not going well you can just focus on the activity hey you know the girl mm -hmm. i'm dating right now likes to talk during movies so you know, no. we're so we're perfect. You can annoy people in public together. <laughs> yeah, Matt would <laughs> um, Matt would hate both of us. All right, well, so so I mean, just to, just to clear the air, it, I still you know maybe lean towards that the movie theater is not the best first date. I do think that Ben 
had the better argument. I think that's so what we're just, going you know what for. I mean? yeah. yeah, we're yeah, not yeah. trying to that's change your mind. Yeah. We're saying no, who argued sure. the right. best. No, it's I just don't uh, you made you made the right decision for sure. And be like, how could you say that? Man, no, can I tell you? No, this is this is Grayson. I feel so bad for you game. having to go twice in a row because I'm I just having gone twice in a row. It's exhausting. I'm ready to sit out. Dude, I'm so ready I'm my, to sit out. My face is already hot because yeah. you get so into it. You have to or I there's know. no shot you'll ever win. And that's the whole, this is yeah. a game. Like, we just want to win. We don't care, yeah. like, who thinks All what, right. actually. All right, yeah. So we let's keep things going. Go again? Been, yeah. yeah. This is so we're fun. Talking though. Behind now. I'm having the best time. Brandon, uh, tell us our next topic for Grayson and Tell. All right, tell. so we're going to keep it a little light. Uh, I know you guys have been working hard. So the next debate topic will be hard shell taco versus soft shell taco. So whatever the coin lands on, that will go to Grayson. The soft shell will be heads. All right, Grayson All right. is going to argue Grayson. soft shell taco is better. Yeah. Tell will argue hard shell taco is better. Man, Brandon, I was really one fighting minute. an uphill battle on that last one. I, I, was, I was gonna... so impressed. You got your butt with the first round, and you said, heck no, not again. Well, I would argue that I, I argued <laughs> amazing both times. but what You did. You? No, I feel like I'm did. very That's well-spoken. That's what I have going for me. Right. Well, you can debate. You're really good at throwing the real subtle shade and yeah. really kicking the other person down. I was down really good at that off too harsh. Tell. I was really good yeah. at tell. Yeah, had a lot of practice. I was just, uh, I was just, ooh, I, I would personally, I don't think I've ever gone on a first date uh, with a movie at, at the movies. It's just not my go-to. I would rather dinner because I do like that conversation stuff. Yeah. Well, my most successful first date was probably coffee shop and episode of Game of Thrones. So not quite dinner and a movie, but something similar. So oh, yeah. Tomato, tomato, depends on the person, which I personally would have thought that it would have been awful to go to a movie. But I would but. even argue, if I was arguing the uh, the fact that movie theaters weren't the perfect one, I would say that, you know, why would you do that when you could do it at the comfort of your home? Because watching a Game of Thrones is so fun when you're... Yeah, but you don't want to go to the person's house on the first date, and you just, you don't, you want to put yourself in that situation. Yeah, I guess that, opinion, I guess but. it depends on who it is, right? Because right. like most yeah. of the people that I've dated, I've known for a while. So I was leading into that like, oh, you don't know this person. You want to get to know them. But I've never really been on a date with a person who mm -hmm. like has done that. So very yeah. interesting. All right, gentlemen, you guys ready? Your time's up. Um, Grayson, you'll be going first and you'll be telling us why we should prefer the soft shell taco. All right. Your time starts All right. now. All right. So. I think the first point to make about a soft shell taco is it's made with a tor a flour tortilla. It can be you know, corn technically too, but you know, flour is more, uh, more popular, I would say. And I would say that you can just use that with a whole lot more things than you can a hard shell, uh, in general. Um, now taco, I will say does include the rest of the ingredients, but I do want to make that argument for the flour tortilla itself. Let it be said. Also, um, I believe that, uh, the soft shell is just, it's, it's available for a broader range of people. Um, so you get a hard shell and you have people that are teethless or you have children that, that are possibly old enough to, uh, to want a taco, but not able to handle a, a hard shell, which brings me to my next point about the young and the old both struggling to chew and therefore there is a choking hazard. And I think that when you're talking about what is better, you need to include the argument about what does it apply to the, mo how does it apply to the most amount of people? And I believe that a soft shell truly, uh, is more available to people because of how soft it is. It's easy to chew. Um, and I also want to make the argument that a soft shell goes better with most things. Uh, it's just more palatable. Um, and me personally, I, I enjoy a soft shell better because guess what? You can stick a soft shell in a hard shell and then you got both best of both worlds, you know, but you can't stick a hard shell in a soft shell. It ain't going to happen. I mean, I guess you could wrap it up, but that's weak. That's weak. All right. That's all I got to say. All right, Grayson, good argument. Nice and concise. Tell, tell us right. why the hard shell is better. Your two minutes starts now. I would say a hard shell, it's, it's all about the presentation, okay? If you give somebody a soft shell taco, yeah, I mean, it's going to, you know, that's exciting. 
But does it look visually exciting? No. You give a hard shell taco, it's standing proud, it looks firm, it looks great. You know, you're like, wow, this is going to be a fun meal to partake in. All right? You know, nachos. The People, if you like nachos, you're going to want a hard shell taco. It's, it's a party in your mouth. It's all about the fun, the presentation. When you're eating a hard shell taco, you feel more authentic than when you're eating a soft shell taco. You feel like you know what you're doing. Like you are a taco enthusiast. You can also get crazy with it. You can have a Doritos Locos taco. That's only a hard shell option. You cannot have a Doritos flavored soft shell. Nobody wants that. It's all about the hard shell. You a uh, a soft shell taco is a hard sell. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> it's about the right presentation there. it's all about fun it's like if you go to a birthday party they're selling or they're having soft shell tacos lame party i'm not i'm not going back i'm taking my present i'm leaving hard shell tacos you've earned my respect we're about to throw down at this birthday party that's that's my statement all right good job boys um Good job, good job. So I will open the floor for a three-minute open discussion. Your time starts now. All right, first of all, remarks? I want to make one last point. Yeah, first of all, you can you can eat a soft shell with a fork. You can't do that with a hard shell. All right, also, you say stand firm. A hard shell, what if it gets soggy? All you do with the soft shell is you turn it 90 degrees, and that soggy going to get right on the plate. Hard sell, you can't unsoggyfy a hard sell. Ain't gonna happen. Sorry about it. Hard sell, dude. You're just hey, dressing hey, hey, everything hey. up in a pretty presentation. No, no. Look, quality. what I'll say. It's all hard shell taco. Up. It gets soggy. Yes, what does it turn into? A soft shell taco. You start off with a hard shell, then you go to soft shell. You eat it just like a soft shell. So yeah, you, that's a hard start sell on right a soggy there. hard shell level. You're eating soggy shells. I'm nope. eating pristine yeah, but quality. You go no, but hold on. Shelf. But you, you're talking about presentation. You're gonna go into the presentation of something seeming hard and then it being soft. That's no. You know you're getting soft with a soft shell. And so if it's soggy, ain't no big deal. It was already gonna be mushy. But if you go into a hard shell, yeah, that's a hard shell when you bite into it and it's soggy. It's nasty. You spit it right back out. Especially, especially if you're a person that 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 likes to eat things because of the the, the mouth feel. You know, some people are immediately will gag if something's texture is off. Has nothing to do with the taste because look, it's going to the same place. Has nothing to do with taste because it's going to the same place. But some people, I would argue, like I said in my original argument, a greater amount of people can eat the soggy. Now, which hold on. To the All right, shell. I'll I'll rebuttal with we're talk. I'm talking pristine hard shell tacos. Okay, <laughs> if it gets soggy, you're eating it too slow. You want the crunch, the sound that it makes. You know, have you seen Ratatouille yeah. where she's like, it's all about absolutely. the sound and she crunches the bread. Dude, you're, you're like, absolutely it's so nice right. to the ears. When you bite into a hard shell taco, you want the sound. You want everyone to know that you're enjoying this food. You know, if you eat a soft shell taco, not interested. If I eat a hard shell taco, everyone in the room's turning to look what I'm doing. They're like, what's he got over there? A hard shell taco. Yeah, I if, want one of those. Also, taste yeah, does matter. If you're matter. eating it by yourself. You, if we go back to the Doritos Locos taco... That's only a hard shell option. If you prefer that taste, you have to go hard shell. You cannot go yes, soft shell. If, if you're baking soft shell, you can bake whatever you want into it. That's just a product of Taco Bell talking specifically. We're talking in a free world. Anything can be made with bread and dough, and that's what's made with the hard shell. So that applies also to soft shell. You're using a, uh, a uh, what's it called? Uh, I'm not, I can't, I'm blanking, but you're using Taco Bell as a singular example. Uh, another point I want to make is that if you are eating hard shell tacos by yourself, yeah, it's going to be a much greater experience. But my argument is, why would you want to eat tacos at all by yourself? You're in a restaurant with people. If it takes you longer to eat food, it's because you're having a good time talking. And so I would argue that soft shells offer a greater time because if it sits there longer, it's okay. If it gets soggy, it's okay. It's not as bad as if you're sitting there talking and have a good time and all of a sudden you got two soggy tacos because you've only had time to eat the one hard hard shell taco which like you said the people are going to be looking for the all first right, five minutes but then they're I'm not going to care anymore all right, all right i'll say my closing statement my closing statement 
I'll say make it short. Hard shells give give for tacos. Give me a hard shell. Soft shell. That's for the burritos. We're not talking burritos. We're talking tacos. Final statement. All right. All right. I think those were both really good examples. I think one side had a end all be all argument that was not made. So I'm going to wait before you give to... your answer. I just want to say, uh, Tell is ableist clearly because he only likes uh, <laughs> hard shell tacos. Dude, I <laughs> can't. So well, I'll, I'll say it. I'm going to statement man. that I was given. Yeah. Man. No, no, I'm just kidding. The the winner of this debate was Tell. <laughs> Fair enough. I yeah. think he came in with a lot more ferocity, and I think he was much more passionate about his stance and i think that's what won the debate what i was really looking for in the soft shell was that you can use the soft shell taco any meal of the day for like breakfast burritos and stuff you know i think that would have really won it's the argument burrito. it's taco though it's taco though I, I made the point several times that you could use it for all kinds of stuff yeah a, a soft well, shell tortilla yeah. but that was not the argument it was about about a burrito so that that what does that matter Grayson, I know. I'm fine the with thing, you the thing that yours was I would missing, just say that's a that's a good response. Grayson, the thing that yours was missing for me was you had to lean in on the fact that every time you try to make or eat a hard shell taco, it breaks and it's a pain in the butt. If you had done that, you would have had my vote, man. But you didn't. You yeah. You know. I talked. I talked about old people and young people choking on it because it's harder to chew. No, but you made. Didn't say I I was on Grayson's side for a really long time up until the end until converted me to the. But he didn't shell. say anything so new. It, That's what, what I'm confused. What was the new point he made at the end that he hadn't already made? Well, it was just the way he, he said it was fun at a party. Ideas. It was more convincing. I was convinced. I was proud of my slogan. But, the soft yeah, that shells was good. The, 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 well, the that thing, was the best thing that you had, though. But I we debunked well, that. Well, I'm not gonna lie. He had me at we the tried, Doritos we tried taco. To. <laughs> he had me yeah. at the Doritos yeah. taco one. That was but, a but great. But what point. about what about being able to make whatever you want in a real world, not just at, at Taco Bell? Does that not well, make a big I'll point? I'll say I thought it did. In in reality, because you can make whatever I don't eat you want. Hard shell tacos. I'm a I'm a big soft shell flour kind of guy. Well, you know, I'm not even a corn. Fla- soft shell tortilla guy. I I you wanted know, so you I'm to like lose. Very American in my in my taco shell choice. Tell I wanted you to lose so bad just because you eat tacos wrong. You put ketchup on them. So I was like, yeah. your point doesn't matter. <laughs> hey. Grayson, if you had said that, it would have helped. I would think. I don't know. It probably wouldn't affect. That wouldn't have helped because I eat soft shell tacos thought, with ketchup on them. That's that's for I a different my topic. Avail- we. The viewers, I thought the viewers, my availability to hear that they're they all clicked off off of this content now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oh my oh, gosh. Hey, but freak. both arguments were very good. These are oh, amazing. Yeah. They're going back and forth so good. Oh. Yeah, I got to get into it, and then I I let my blood pressure like settle so in. After does that mean it's me and Grayson again, right? Yes. Yeah. So I have one. Tell has Dude, two. I don't, I don't know how I can keep doing this, y'all. I'm really putting effort in. I don't know how that wasn't passionate enough, Brendan. I was yelling. I'm gonna really get into it now. I'm not saying it wasn't passionate. I'm just saying Tell's was more passionate. All right. Are but we uh, do we want to do we want to take right. a quick to like two minute recess? You know, just chill for a minute. That way, Grayson's got a time to build, you know. No, uh, we, we gotta go. This is gonna be a really long for... podcast if we yeah, take a break. Yeah. We're not gonna get because... to three. Like I don't. Well, what? Because what, what is it now? As long as we're two. having fun and no one's in a hurry, we we can keep it up. But let's not take a let's not take a break mm-hmm. just for okay. You know, keep it going. Y'all could always do a part two. Yeah, but then the yeah, scheduling the scheduling is difficult for this. Okay, I say if there's ever a point where like there's a two to two. And they're not going to line up, you know, because we might not end up with a point where it's like the two and the two are going at the same time. Right. So like, well, who no, known? What, what's going to happen is I've won two. Have has Grayson won? Yeah. Both of you have won one, right? Yeah. Grayson hasn't won yet. Well, oh, dang. I haven't won. But here's, I've it could happen to where two. there's a two, two, two. Yeah. Well. We'll we'll play know. it out. I mean, Let's just play yeah, it out and see what happens. See if yeah. I lose again, I mean, though, I, I have to go, go for again. so much longer. Yeah, Brandon, I would say don't uh, judge off of the time or whatever, but like, you know, like don't just hand away like a win or whatever, just so it's like gonna wrap up early. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Let's uh let's see what happens in this one. What's Debate the next topic. topic? All right, cartoons are better than live action or vice versa. 
Okay, so Heads is going to be live action. Or no, cartoons. Heads will be cartoons. Cartoons are better than live action. And Mm -hmm. Grayson, you'll get whatever's on the phone. Heads. All right, Grayson gets cartoons. Grayson, you will go first. We'll give you a minute to accumulate your thoughts. Your time starts now. Tell what's it like to be in the winner's circle two times in a row. Dude, it's great. Oh, man. Sorry, I had my mic over there. Dude, it's great. Um, I'm really, you know, I'm really looking forward to the next debate. So let's get this one out of the way. Let's see who I'm going to debate. And then let's crush them. You know, <laughs> it'll be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, I'll say the, the taco debate was hard for me because I'm totally team soft shell. Because mm-hmm. I don't eat, like, if I go to um, Taco Bell, like, I will get the Doritos Locos Taco. Not to say I don't like hard shell tacos, but I, I, I don't think I've ever ordered a hard shell taco at a Mexican restaurant. Other, You know, I've only gotten mm-hmm. fast food hard shell tacos. Um, so I was thinking, oh, man, I don't, I don't know anything about this topic. But I thought, oh, it'll just be short and fun. And then I just started writing down, and I, once I got to the... I wrote down first chips. I was like, that's kind of lame. Authentic. I was like, it seems authentic, but hard shell tacos were invented after soft shell tacos. So it's not really authentic. Um, but then I wrote down presentation and then I was excited about that. Um, and then the presentation. You just had a lot of good catchers. You caught me. You you. know, that's really what got, yeah, you, yeah. So guys, your, your minutes up. So I'm going to go ahead and let the next round go. Grayson, you'll be first. So I'll give you you two minutes to tell us why cartoons are better than live action movies. I'm really excited for this one. So, all right. So I think the strongest argument for this uh, in particular is that in the world of cartoons, uh, I think for lack of a better term, you can say animation, um, because anything can, uh, anything animated could be considered a cartoon. I would say loosely, um, but off of that, I would say that any world or any place or anything that is imaginable is possible to create in cartoons or in animation in real life or a real world. You know, you are limited to physics. You're limited to physical constraints because you have to create things in a different way. Now, yes, today we have better CGI, um, but that goes, I think CGI is still, it is now animate, you know, it's animated computer generated imagery and so I'd say that even if you do have a real live action and you're using CGI, you have to m- mix the both like both of them together. Usually you don't have you can have animation that stands on its own. So I think that's a really strong argument on the side of a cartoon. Um let's see. Everything um let's see. The people the reason why p- most people watch any kind of media is usually for the plot and I believe that the story um can be communicated in the same way on a cartoon that it can be in real life. And so if you have a, the ability to uh, show character development and plot and all the things that matter in the, uh, in the integrity of a story and you're able to communicate that with an audience and any form of visual imagery that you want to, you're not losing anything. All you have is, is things to gain and more artistic ability and just the versatility is really the biggest argument for cartoons that you're just, you're limited to, to certain things in the real world. Uh, now the workaround of that is intellect is, is human, human, you know, our imagination, but that goes back to my original point. Even if you have the imagination to make something amazing in real life, it's easier to manipulate in, in the computer or hand drawn hand drawn is a lot less likely yeah. these days because it's usually hand drawn computer. Um, but I would say sure. it's, just, it's, you know, that that's, that's all I'm okay. just going to keep saying the same thing. So, Yeah. Yeah, good good argument, Grayson. Really good. Um, ben, your two minutes to tell us why cartoons are not good starts now. So if you remember, in one of the first few podcasts of this podcast series, I talked about I didn't like cartoons. Okay? I'm not a fan of cartoons, and this has been proven on this very podcast. I'm just more of a fan of live action. And I think this is shown... In people everywhere. The most popular movies of all time are live action. Avengers, Avatar, Titanic. 
all those movies live action, right? Cartoons, there are good cartoon movies out there, and obviously, like, the, there is good emotion and there's good storytelling, but it's all about that storytelling, right? And then what helps bring home that storytelling more? It's the emotion in an actor's face, right? Good storytelling plus a cartoon can make a good product. Good storytelling plus great acting or even good acting can really just sell whatever you're making, whether it be a movie, whatever, whether it be, you know, what, whatever medium we're talking about with this. Um, cartoons are not as visually pleasing as some live action. Think about the prettiest B-roll you've ever seen in a movie. And now think of the prettiest B-roll you've ever seen in a cartoon. It's not even comparable. You know what I mean? And there's so many formats. Uh, there's IMAX, there's Big D, there's all that. You can get that stuff in a cartoon and you can watch those in cartoons, but you don't go for those experiences with a cartoon. You go for those experiences with live action because a live live action is the superior experience, right? Um, and those are my biggest points that I have to, <clears throat> to call home on that. Is that my time? You got 10 seconds. Okay. Well that can be my time. Okay. All right. So just, I just want to go ahead and throw some things out there for y'all to maybe touch on. If you want to do your own discussion, just some things I thought were interesting. Grayson claims that CGI counts as cartoons, which would mean that you using avatar as a live action example is not valid. Um, and then also talking about yeah, let, let landscaping, me, let me that sort about. of thing was also interesting. So the three minute discussion for you guys to talk about whatever you want, that starts now. All right. So I want to touch off what Brandon was going to say, cause I was going to make this point that all, all of the movie examples you used include CGI. And I think if we include that in cartoons in animations, which was kind of loosely defined by me, it wasn't necessarily invalidated or validated by you. So I assume that we're on similar wavelength as far as that. My big question with that is if these movies, you talked about the story being communicated so well through these movies, if, if the story was so great, why did it need to be sustained by the CGI? Why did cartoons have to be added to make it even better? The argument is because animation and cartoons are so much easier to manipulate. Okay, so my response to that, that you named my response to that is okay. is because some things are just not possible in real life. I'm sorry, but Iron Man doesn't exist. But you know what they try to do with that CGI and what separates it from a cartoon? Because I think CGI and cartoon is incredibly different. CGI is made to look real. Cartoons are made to look fake. Why do they have CGI? And why are all these great movies using CGI? Because we want to tell our story as real as possible. And you cannot do that with a cartoon because you immediately see a cartoon and you're like, well, this isn't real. But when you can make it real, throw in a splash of CGI, that is completely different than cartoons. If you look up the definition of CGI, it, it tells the complete thing. And I... Literally can't even, I mean, it's all technical, but it, it's computer it, it, generated imagery. Literally, when you look it up, they say that they're completely different things. They're made in completely different ways. And that tells you right there it's, that it's they still, should not be compared. It's still coded. CGI is not com- cartoons. If, it's, if you told me that you that went to Avengers Endgame to go in watch a, a cartoon. Fashion. Oh, Avengers Endgame is my favorite cartoon. No, no one says that. Oh, Avatar. I love I that cartoon. Car- Okay. All right. It's my turn. So I th- are you People done? do say that. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So. so oh, they say yeah, it with yeah. the actual because cartoon. I think, but not with the well, movie. But but cartoon. Yeah. You made a, you made another point for me. Cartoon and animation, I think, are used interchangeably. Now, if you talk about original cartoons, were made on on a piece of paper that was flipped. You know, like if you take a sticky pad, and it was made to emulate real life, but they couldn't make it look exactly like real life because they were constrained to the technology that was available. And that technology that is available today to make computer-generated imagery is also available to make cartoons in the same fashion. It's all digitized. It's so all you, coded. So you admit it's right there is that the they started fashion. cartoons trying to make it as real as possible, showing that the real yes, version because that's, is the that's preferred all we know version. Is humans. It's the and way that people want. Yeah, it's absolutely. the way people do it. So that okay, brings, you're that. right. Awesome. That brings me to that's my next point. You're right. right. Let's, let's talk about that. That brings me to my next point. So we are constrained as humans to reality that we know. That's why the aliens that we have designed are, are look just like us. They just have bigger heads because we can't, it's hard. I mean, yes, the longer time goes on, we have more artistic presentations of it because 
that's that's my main point I want to make here is that the artistic ability to constray, you know, imagination is so much more versatile with animation. You know, if you want to talk about logic and, and making everything fine. real, that's fine up, in the scientific world. Okay, in a scientific world, that's completely fine, making everything logical. But in artistic world, which is all we're talking about, cartoons, movies, all artistic, it needs to be, you know, more versatile. That's more, That's it. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I make my closing argument? Make it short. Okay, he said in his argument that cartoons were originally made on paper to make it as real as possible. And so they were making cartoons, trying to make them live action, basically. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Live action is better than cartoons because they started with cartoons trying to make them live action. They tried to make it as real as possible. That's the argument. And I think he literally admitted it. And then obviously all of my other points. So, okay. Well, uh, I'm going to have to give it to Grayson. Why? Yeah, for I sure. Think he, I think it's really hard to beat. So I think it's really hard to beat the cartoons are you have more flexibility um something topic yeah something that i i think really kind of debunks your logic was saying that you use cgi to make things more lifelike and and if that's the that was there you're going and that's and you also so you say that cgi is making more lifelike you're saying cgi is a cartoon no because we're not talking about animation cartoon right but y'all brought up CGI and y'all were fighting over that. You said that CGI is meant to look more lifelike. Then you also said that in real life, you're able to convey more emotion. So, and I did say me, CGI was and, different than cartoon, right? So the conversation shouldn't even be affected by that. By CGI, I think it should be. It's kind of animation. It, it's definitely but animation. It, yeah, but oh. if you animate, you're talking about cartoons as a style, not a, a but actual. This isn't even thing, about CGI. This right? is not even about CGI. Let me let me finish what I was yeah, going to yeah. say. Is that this is about some sort of animation, even cartoons, trying to be brought into a real life perspective. Correct? Is that is that correct? Y'all made the argument that cartoons over time are emulated to look more realistic. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. In some form or fashion. Because the so, ideal goal is live ones, action. Yeah. Because live so, action so is it, the superior If way. it is, if it is, then why was The Lion King and Jungle Book live action such a flop? Why did people hate those movies? <laughs> I, I literally don't know, what you, don't know what to tell you. Tell me your favorite movie. Favorite movie? I don't know. I have a lot of favorite movies. It's probably... If you named your top ten, probably not cartoons, because you just, cartoons, cartoons like the, would make my top ten, but they they would, not, would but they would the not one. be the majority. Yeah, yeah. No, what? Yeah, what I'll say for the cartoon That's versus crazy live action debate. Live action, it's all about the actors. It's it's you know both are about the story the storytelling. I would say live action the strength is the character depth and emotion, and cartoon is. The setting. You can do whatever your mind tells you to do in a cartoon. So I, I would say w- the, you know, the budgetary restrictions on live action s- have a limit, you know, so you can't get to anything you imagine in live action. In a cartoon, you can. So it if is you just need amazing that, you have to, to me. cartoon. It is just amazing to me that you can yeah. say CGI, you, you admitted that CGI was called, the, the CGI Lion King was called live action. Doesn't that tell you that it's not a cartoon? CGI can't okay, be a cartoon. Right. Uh, but it's, what I'm saying, yeah, it's not real though. It would be yeah. it would be impossible. But that's not the argument. We're talking animation. about cartoon live action. CGI was used but, all but, up in Lion King. Okay, and it was considered so, so live then you're action. Arguing that the Therefore, topic, all right, yeah. So you're arguing that the topic was we should have clarified that either animation or cartoon. So it was really the topic. No, that's that why, was the topic. This was more so, of the topic. No, but that was the topic. Brandon already said that he didn't. Yeah, he didn't relate cgi equals cartoon he already said that right what was your point what i was saying what what i'm saying is that if you're driving the point home that animation or cartoons to some capacity if they evolve over time and get more realistic we've seen examples of that to some extent it's not exactly a cartoon give me an example give me an example what example are you what all he's saying is that it got worse thank you once it went to live a cartoon went to live action it got worse 
Thank and you. He, Brandon made that connection on his own after you brought up the point that cartoons are trying to emulate live action. So once a cartoon and, and, did get to live action, it got worse in his opinion. Because so that's cartoons are worse. And in a lot of other oh people's gosh, opinions. That's crazy. Let me go ahead and say yeah, this. Though, I, but, but, I do not think But Ben, you hate, you hate cartoons. Like That's, that's yeah. very clear. So you have a very strong bias, which in a debate scenario definitely needs to be considered, which is fine. You have an opinion, but other people don't always share that. I'm blown so away. I'm Brandon honestly blown away. said, hey... This is Am the I not going to get invited back? Did you, I mean, no, I'm glad you did. Had, you just know I'm that, Brandon? Yeah. So here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. It's it's going to be if Grayson wins this next one versus wait, Grayson doesn't go for the next one. No, it's now, me versus now Tell go. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. this is going to be Tell. I, do I have one or two? You have one. Tell has two. Grayson has one. Ben has one. Okay. So so let's do it. Let's do. If I win, it's over. If you win, me and you go again. What do you think? Or do we want to just keep doing it how we've been doing it? Well, we're so then am I just here. out now? That's what yeah. I'm saying. So well, you have one now, and then? I have yeah, one. That's that's kinda, why, how many times have you gone, Grayson? I know, but if oh, well, yeah, I guess. if Tell wins now, he just wins and I don't even get a chance. So it's kind of... Well, that's my. That's why this is difficult. I'm not trying to complain, but I, like, I, yeah, it's just well, well, like, we a could, fact. I don't know. Maybe we could throw in a like YouTube versus me or something. You two, two versus one isn't fair. Maybe if maybe if Ben but loses, if I think if I think I can do it, yeah, then and that's wanna, a winning argument. To fight back apparently, and then all right, look, look, look. How about this? This is just we're just rolling with the cuff since we're we're pretty far into time. What if Tell wins? Then the next podcast will just have to continue it on. Can be me fighting back. Because then if Ben wins, he gets well, yeah, to fight. Yeah, but right Tell now you're at one and I'm at one. Why is it thing? you fighting back? Yes. Because if Tell wins, he's got three wins, which in the original context he would win, and I wouldn't even have a chance to go because he's already reached that cap three. So we well, got yeah, but the I would cap have a chance four. just as much as you would. Because yes, we're both you would, we're we're the one battle each other in the next podcast. Yeah, but it's Look, different. Yeah, so yeah, if, yeah. if Tell wins, listen. Okay, go, go ahead, ahead, Tell. You said listen. Well, if, if you if you win, yeah, if you win, then it would be over with the three cap rule. So I'm saying we right. got to change that. That's my main point. What I'm saying is, what what what's our plan? Are we <laughs> are we are we going to continue the way that we've been doing? If if I lose this next one, are Ben and Grayson going to no? Are me and Grayson going to fight again and just continue until somebody gets to three? Or are we going to try to keep the podcast to a reasonable length? I think we have to. Yeah, first one to three. We said at the beginning, first one to three wins. So if Tell goes, then he's just the winner of this round, and that's how it lucked out. We can do this again if it does well, and we want to do it again, and we had fun, and we can, you know what I mean? Like, it's not that big of a deal to have one winner if we do it again. You know what I mean? And then whoever wins that one, it'll be a tie, right? Yeah, doing it again is not the question. I'm just saying, is this about to get too long if I'd lose this? No. I think we need to play it out. I, Either that, or we I'm should leave it here. It's a little long. Well, I don't think we should leave it. Yeah. We should leave it here. We shouldn't even give you the chance to lose. Then. Yeah, but now that's now that's a big, you know, like disappointment well, yeah, but, to the viewers. But it's a di- you're saying it's going to be a disappointment to the viewers if we stop when you don't win here. I don't know. I'm ju- I'm just trying to say like, what's the plan moving forward? We either is this the next debate topic. <laughs> See, we either need to stop here or finish it out. Because either way, you're wanting to... Because either if we continue and stop after this next round because you well, didn't win... All right, all right. let's be just keep two, going two, because this is getting yeah. really terrible. This is like... Yeah, but it, it's just going to... It's either going to drag on or Tell's going to win and I'm not going to get to yeah. to argue well, again it's because I just I right won. So let's just, let's just let yeah. it drag on. I think everyone's gotten I mean, a chance to speak somewhat equally. So far. Okay, so who is it now? Uh, me and Tal. Me and Ben. Okay. So I want you guys to talk about chicken versus pork, and chicken will be heads. Okay. Uh, I'm the one that gets it? Mm-hmm. Chicken. All right. So I'm debating for pork. Yep. So Ben, you'll go first and tell us how much you love chicken and why. So you'll have a minute to do that. All right, man, it starts now. 
Grayson, good job on that last debate. Thanks, bud. Yeah. Thank you, Lee Joe. I appreciate it. I feel like it was, this is kind of a topical debate, you know, whoever's on what side and how you feel about that side, you know, and who's better right. at like improv in versus who's like, obviously that last one, it Ben felt so strongly at the end because he really hates cartoons. And so it, it wasn't the fact that he was just trying to play the part. He actually is the part, you know? And so that's why I think like, there was more spirited debate because obviously you care more about stuff you actually care about. And therefore it's mm-hmm. going to like show. So I, I understand that, you know, and this whole I thing just, is like kind of a game thing. So it, and it's all oh, yeah. based off of your opinion. And so it, it's just, right. You know, this is all based on my opinion. I don't need y'all coming for me yeah. in the comments, telling me how wrong yeah. I am. Don't come find yeah, me. It's just, it's, it's, just a, a, it's a flip of a coin, you know, a or B it's not the yeah. true or false. It's not that big of a deal. You got to 50, 50, you got to choose somebody. All right, timer's up. There's there's much more tea in the world. Don't don't come at me. Spend your tea sipping somewhere else. <laughs> All right, so Ben, are you ready to tell us the miracles of chicken? Yeah. Okay, so my argument ahead. with chicken is I think chicken is the perfect food. It is versatile. It works in a lot of ways and it's not uh and, and it's just an easy product to put out that you can make taste good pretty simply and it's it's very well done and i think this is shown statistically um 8 billion chickens were used in a year in the united states alone and 109.905 million pork worldwide was used in 2018 so that just shows the am- amount there's a vast amount of difference between chicken and pork right people just eat more chicken. And I think you see that wherever you go. I know for a fact, tell orders chicken fingers at every restaurant he goes to. He doesn't order pork fingers. They don't offer pork fingers wherever he goes because pork is not offered at most places. You kind of have to go out of your way. And now is barbecue good? Yeah, of course. But is barbecue chicken good? Yes, of course. Right. Um, Chicken is easy to cook, right? If you don't know how to cook, you can put a chicken in the crock pot for four hours and it comes out and it is perfect. When you're cooking pork you have to be careful with eating it you have to cook it to a certain temperature or else you will get sick and i know chicken kind of has that but not to the level of pork Uh it's easier to cook chicken right pork is dangerous to work with there's a lot more extra steps that you have to go to in cooking it um and i think that is my biggest point i'll be interested to see what tell has to say (sighs) Hey, Ben, All you right. cut well, out. Can I'll you say... give me like your last last 30 seconds? I'm okay. sorry. Oh, I cut out? Uh, just yeah. chicken is easy to cook. Pork is can be dangerous to cook. Uh, Tell mm-hmm. eats chicken and not pork, and I know that. Uh, and most, And even if you don't want to count that, restaurants everywhere offer chicken. Yeah, go anywhere, they offer chicken. There's not a single place, unless you're a vegan or whatever, a vegan restaurant that doesn't offer chicken. You don't see pork everywhere, and it's because it's just not as common. And it's not okay. as liked. All right. Tell, give us the the pork rundown. Well, I'll say, um, if we just start with a pig as a whole, you get a whole lot more portion with pork. All right. If you're eating chicken, you're, you are not high class. You're eating, you know, if we think of chicken, like what's the most commonly consumed chicken? It's either chicken fingers or... Or a chicken sandwich, both of which are fried, unhealthy. Pork can be classy. Pork tenderloin, that's that's a nice date meal. You know, that's an expensive, quality meal. All right? Chickens are a lot more disease-ridden than pork is. If you don't cook a chicken right, you can get ill, but you can eat practically raw pork. It's much safer to eat raw pork than it is to eat raw chicken. Also, pork is red meat, which you would say it it is. If you eat red meat, some people say it's bad. Red meat does boost your energy. It builds stronger immune systems. It promotes brain health, and it boosts your metabolism. Now, this is all in in moderation. So, red meat is a, is good for you. Therefore, pork is good for you. Um, China eats most of the world's pork. And you think about the average Chinese person versus the average American person, where chicken is mainly consumed. Chinese people 
You think of a Chinese person, they're lean, they're healthy. Think of an American, they're fat, they're lazy. <laughs> That's because we're eating fried chicken. We're not eating healthy pork. We could also go with, you could use more parts of a pig than you can a chicken. You know, pig bladders, that was a ball in Little House on the Prairie. You know, pig bladder, tossed the pig skin, led to football. If we didn't have pigs, we wouldn't have football, you know? So, pork is a very viable option. It's the better option, I would say. Time is up. All right, now we've got our three-minute open discussion. You guys can start now. I think it's really cute uh, that you think um, that pork is the only fancy food. When I promise you, you had to Google that name. You Pork tenderloin, I eat that every week. Oh, so it's so fancy you're able to eat it every week? Cool. So it's yeah, not it myself. super it's the fancy. Most, it's not super it's, fancy. When we're talking let about... Let me cook it for you. You're going you're gonna to think it's fancy. So we're talking... Now, I can throw out fancy chicken names, too. When you want to talk about the specific, like, oh, yeah, the worst of the worst chicken, chicken fingers from Dairy Queen. Yeah, those aren't. Or we could talk about bad pork and bad pork. Well, let's talk about the unhealthy you. pork. Pad, you bad know what the pork unhealthy pork you. is? It's bacon. It's bacon. What's the greatest meat? Candy meat. Bacon. Everybody loves bacon. Yeah, but Nobody let's talk about the worst of the, the worst. They want bacon. They let's want talk the about the worst of the worst. Bad pork will kill you. That's so cool. Um, and I don't like the argument of a Americans versus Asia because they eat chicken and pork. That is not why Asia is more is better than us, right? They're healthier than us. There are so many different factors than that. Is it? It's a completely different argument, and so is the argument that oh, pigs are so useful. The argument isn't about how useful the pig and how useful the chicken is. We're talking about chicken and pork. We're talking about the okay. taste of well, the let's meat. Let's talk about CAFOs. Do you know what a CAFO is? What's a CAFO? That's a concentrated animal feeding operation. CAFOs pollute the environment to no, to unimaginable extent. Oh, and you're going right? to say that happens chicken to ca- chicken and not pork? Chicken CAFOs... They're so vast. There's so many of them, and they're so concentrated because of chicken coops. They have them all packed in there. They can't move. Chicken trucks are disgusting. You've seen them drive through Decatur. Yeah, and they're you've disgusting. never seen pork. Chicken cafos. Yeah, pork when farms it rains, are gross. All of that chicken poop goes into the water system, pollutes the water, tons of bacteria, E. coli, through the roof. That's, that's the chicken side of things. Have you ever seen Animal pork. Farm? Have you ever seen Animal Farm? Or, or read the book about how poorly maintained things are. We could go yeah, about this all this day. Is, animal there farms are, about communism, not pork versus chicken. What? What? No, 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 no. It's going into the the uh, the specifics on how things are prepared in a in a food. Look it up. Animal Farm is about <laughs> communism. It's not about chicken or You're pork wrong. sanitary. You're wrong. All right, so we're talking. We're, we could go back and forth on there's good ways and bad ways to do it. And if you don't think there's a bad way to do pork and it's not done all the time, then you're wrong. We could, of course, there are people doing the chicken thing bad. There are good ways to prepare chicken as well. There are so many Google pork farms and it is just as disgusting. I promise you because I just did it. Okay. And I just don't understand the thought process. You're running out of things to say is the thing. Wrap you up, know, man. you don't have a strong argument. Because And that's why you're having to go into the things like America and Asia and the uses of the pork. Because end of the day, no, people prevent- do not like I'm, pork. I'm just preventing facts. You know, we can talk about... You, you can eat facts pork that are not meal. relevant. Facts that are not right, relevant. Let's wrap it up, guys. They are relevant. Debate, debate is up. Debate is up. All right. All right. So I think both of you guys gave really strong arguments. Um, hmm... I'm going back and forth because Tell said some things that I liked and then Bid said some things that I liked. The the cathos thing, is that what it's called? Cafo, yeah. Yeah, that's getting to me. But then bring Ben also said, Well, I mean, that's not just for chickens, so Yeah, look at I don't know. Look at how, well, look at how tough that I'm, is. I'm an environmental engineer in my profession. I don't know we if you can see this in the video. Cafos but those are dead pigs in the middle with all those pigs. That's kinda <laughs> That's kind of tough. And when you get a dead chicken here and there, 
That's not the same as having a dead pig in the middle of everything. That's kind of gross, but... (laughs) Okay, Uh, Ben. I'm Um, just saying, we were talking about this cathos thing, and it's just as gross on the back end. I'm going to have to give it to Ben. What a shame. I think... There are pig cathos, that's true. Yeah, exactly. I think, so my thing is that I thought Tell gave are a the really ones sh- that we struggle yeah, with. Though, that here. got me. I think Tell gave an overall better argument, but I think Ben was really good at pointing out some plot points that either was, didn't quite relate or poking, poked some holes. So that's why I gave it to him overall. All right, this will continue. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> See, the beauty of it is the listeners are fine. If you're listening to a podcast, <laughs> you're listening to it all the way through, right? right? It's us. Like, if we can't do it, then that's one thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, so now it's Grayson and Ben. Grayson, how are you feeling? My, I'm, my, my headphone, I've only got one headphone now, though. I just don't, don't want to cut out and not be able to hear anybody at this. If I had, I don't have any, like, actually, like, I wish I had a wire right now, actually. You know, we used to just want wireless stuff. I wish I had wire headphones. Well, so what do we do if we're arguing and Grayson cuts out or can't hear us? Well, Grayson, do you want to keep going or do you want me and Ben to take it one more time? Do you want to take the risk or no? Uh, Maybe I'll just... We're definitely going to do another debate podcast, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm having I'm fun. I'm having fun. Then, then because I'm at one win and we need to wrap it up, anyways. Um, I'd say let's let y'all go for the win, and then next maybe next time we have it, maybe I can have like a little tiny head up or something, you know? Since yeah, I didn't have an extra yeah. argument. No, nothing serious, but okay. All right, cool. That's a good idea. That, that I think that's a good compromise. All right, so it's me and Tell going again. Yeah, um, I'm excited about this topic. Disney remakes are good. Disney remakes are bad. So the good well, will be the heads. Well, we already talked about this. The bias yeah, is shown. I, right I, I don't. Yeah. I argument. personally would withstand because I know one hundred percent. No matter what I argue, you would go. You know what I mean? I've already said everything Who, I could say. Yeah, I could. I've already said everything I said, and you don't like them. Yeah. Just do something not about like as media as much, or at least cartoons. iPhone versus Android. We did that one, didn't we? Well, no, but I don't well, know if that's well, that a was, good one. That was oh, just what we talked about before. We, yeah. Our practice. What about the uh, essential oils or the best television character? I would like the best television uh, character. Yeah, the television character. I think that one. I think that I like that okay. one best. Okay. All right, so best television character is either Ron Swanson or Creed. All right. Creed so Ron Brand Swanson. From the office. Ron Swanson yeah. from Parks and Rec will be heads. Yeah. It's spinning. And then it's you'll get spinning. Oh yeah. Will you get heads? It. Yeah. All right, so I get Ron Swanson. All right, banter. Banter, banter. Grayson, I think you had some good debates. Um, I'm excited Thanks, to see bud. you come back and hit, hit it again. I think, I think just Dude, uh, this is fun. This we is all have to time. figure this out on your own. I think, honestly, what would be best is, and, and y'all come up with this on your own, is go ahead and assign each, each other debate topics and give each other time to maybe do a little bit more research instead of just a few minutes. You know, I think because yeah. I think you have a lot improv. of good ideas and you'd be able to have strong arguments that way. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I th- I think it's still interesting just to see how spirited we can get over things that we just were presented. You know, this is not <laughs> trivial. Some of these things, you know, we have thought about more, you know, like tell he's uh, always eat soft shell tacos, like he said. So that's something that he came in or the whole tell a mountain lion argument. Or even Ben's cartoons. You know, we just come into it with, if I would have argued chicken versus pork, I lo- I eat chicken almost every day. Me pork too. I like too, too. But, you know, so I would be such a, you know, it'd be easy for me to argue chicken. I'd have to make stuff up for pork. So I think that's a huge yeah. thing with this, uh, this debate, you know, just the topical nature of it. But it also makes it well, very some- interesting. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you're given topics that you know a lot about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it makes for an interesting dynamic for sure. But I think maybe no, a little prior sure. research an, and assignment might help make them a little bit more. Because for me, it's also hard sometimes because both of them are kind of like, eh, I mean, y'all both just look this up in three minutes. So like, you know, how, how good are both of you really? Yeah. I think another, like that's an option coming in with like research 
debate topics and knowing what we're going to be talking about. And then also if it was completely blind. And so whoever the moderator is comes in and it's like on the spot. This is what you get to argue about. Maybe the time's shortened, so you got 30 seconds each. So the other person, because if you're the first person to talk, you're at a disadvantage in some aspects yep. because the other person's got time to think. They've got time to use stimuli from you to gather other ideas. And so that's just a part of this, you know, debate. So we could do things to like, you know, mess with that as well. So that's, that's also another option. Banter, yeah, banter. definitely, definitely ways to enhance it and make it a little bit more fair. So there's plenty of room for improvement, but you guys, your time's up. Ben, you want to go ahead and tell us what you think? Yeah, so I think I've made it known to at least the guys in general that Ron Swanson, I highly believe, is, if not the greatest, especially in these two matchups, the greatest uh, of all time. He's so quotable. He is so amazing at being the funny guy in Parks and Rec, right? And it comes from a character that you wouldn't necessarily es- expect, right? Every single quote that you get from Juan- Ron Swanson will be great no matter what, no, no matter if it's out of context. Creed's is very topical. It fits in the timing situation, which is good. Like, that's funny. And I'm not saying Creed's not funny. Ron Swanson is just so much better and he's there more often. Creed is there and he's not there very often. He doesn't even get a line until like the first, the second or third season. I think he's just kind of there in the background or if he does get a line, he doesn't really develop his character until very late in the game. They knew what they were doing coming in with Ron Swanson right away. And since there's not much about Creed, if we had a lot of Creed, he might get old, but we have a lot of Ron and Parson wreck and everybody loves him. Right. He's a very well-developed character, and his storylines are very good, vast storylines. There's the whole Tammy thing, where Tammy, it it becomes this reoccurring uh, character where he's got, you know, this ex-wife, and then he's got this other ex-wife, and then another ex-wife named Tammy. That's hilarious. His woodworking skills cause all kinds of trouble and and fun for the people in their office group. And it's based off the real guy. A lot of Ron Swanson is based off of the real guy because he's a woodworker, right? Uh, In real life. And he's meat loving. Some of the best quotes of all time come from him loving meat so much. And one of the best moments I had, I literally... You can bring up Ron Swanson in any moment and it'll make people happy. I did it with Coach Ray, our history teacher, my senior year. I was like, you know, you remind me a lot about him. And now every single time on my birthday, Coach Ray comments and he comments a quote from Ron Swanson because that made him so happy that I called him that he reminded me of Ron Swanson that he still thinks of that. And that just shows how much of a compliment Ron Swanson is and how much of a great character. Whereas if if you get called a creed, that's cool. but. I was just waiting what to be I'm, cut off. You were no, cut I, off. I, I, said, I said something. What'd you I'm say? Sorry, you might not have heard it. I All just right. said, good job. Let's wrap it up. Oh, that's okay. I didn't, I didn't realize. I thought you were no, complimenting right. my great time. To start off, to start no, no, off no, my no, argument. I was trying to nicely cut you off. <laughs> yeah. To start off my argument, I would like to say how impressive it is that Creed Bratton, we all agree he's not the main character of The Office. But he is in the debate of the best TV show characters of all time against a main character of another show because Creed is so good. All right. And you say for Ron Swanson that Ron Swanson's based off of the actor. Creed Bratton exists in real life. William Charles Schneider is, was Creed Bratton. Creed, William Charles Schneider changed his name to Creed Bratton because the character is so impactful and so spectacular. All right. Creed Bratton, you know, he, he's not, it doesn't matter. He, he's not there to say, to be topical. Like you said that Ron, you can quote him anytime. Creed Bratton, all of his quotes are just bizarre. You know, it's funny. It just, it takes you, you know, every time he talks, you laugh. He's great. Um, he sings in the show. He's multi-talented. That's great. You know, you love him. Um, his character is kind of up to interpretation. You get to imagine what does Creed Bratton do? You know what Ron Swanson does. You know, it's not fun to imagine, oh, I wonder what Ron's doing right now. You know what he's doing. Creed, it's so fun to imagine what, what, what does Creed think about this situation? Because he's so out there. Another thing is that 
he, Ron, you are confined to this character. Where Creed, you don't really understand Creed. So you, he is so vast, you can use whatever character trait you want, you can give it to Creed. If you want a character trait in a show, just give it to Creed. Because Creed is just like a man of mystery. You know, he's mysterious. He's just, you know, he's just incredible. Um, another thing is that Creed Bratton is inclusive to the LGBT community, which is very important these days, you know, because one of up, his though. one of his things, I'll finish this this statement here. One of his lines is that, has he ever been with a man? And he says, oh, you know, it's possible back in the 70s, you know, it's possible that a man could have slipped up in there. There'd be no way of knowing, you know, that's, you know, shows that Creed Bratton you know, is inclusive of the LGBT community and therefore, you know, can be looked in good view of that. All right. Good, good debate. Last conversation for the three minutes. Time starts now. All right. Well, so big point to be made. You said, you know, Ron Swanson is a main character. Creed is not a main character and he's still in this running. That's a good point. But when you, when you look at trying to develop the character, trying to make more of him, like you said, you do it in your head. You know they tried to make a Creed runoff, a, a Creed spinoff, but they couldn't because they literally didn't have enough to go on. The writers themselves couldn't make anything solid there. And I know like it's cool to imagine, but when we're talking about the greatest character of all time, it's just difficult to give it to somebody who you can't even make a single episode all about you know what i mean they couldn't make a pilot episode for a creed bratton tv show right well that's the thing he's too mysterious that's his thing is that you don't know what he's doing that's the fun about him and i understand as soon that. as you know what he's doing it's not creed bratton anymore but if is you know it, what he's up to he's not creed bratton that's why that show didn't work because that was not creed bratton is ambiguity what you look for in a great character. It is one for a good character. And I would say, you know, he's a really good character, but we're talking about the best of all time. And I would also well, that's say that's what sets him apart is his ambiguity. Every other character that's your favorite is the same. You know their character, you know, to a T. They're always gonna do this. Creed, the beauty of it is that you're always left wondering what's he gonna do, what's he gonna say. What does he think about this? And it's a, it's really refreshing to well, have. Well, so I would say you have everything good about Creed in the character of Ron Swanson because he is so off the hook. He's so left of what you expect to happen in the context of the show. And he comes out and he's very much like, like, this is me. I love meat. I disagree with all of you. And he's just, he is the same kind of antagonist, just fully fleshed and put into a great form. Whereas Creed is impossible to do that. Ambiguity is just not developed enough into a character. Ron Swanson has the same appeal as Creed Bratton, but in a much better way. And I know you said that the quotes, you know, he wasn't made to be a quotable person and everything. That no, is part of is. his problem. He's but not made out to be of context. Very quotable. He's so quotable. But not out of context. No, he is out of context. That's what you said. Because my no, point is, was that context, Ron Swanson no, is the most quotable person of all time. No, you just didn't understand what I was saying. I was arguing against that point that you made. Craig okay. Bratton is very quotable out of context. I, I would, would say nowhere near Ron Swanson. Well, if Ron does have more dialogue, does that make his dialogue better? No. I would Creed's t- dialogue stands... He has much less dialogue compared to Ron Swanson, but just as many quotable moments, I would say. So tell me, tell me, we're talking for, about screen time. Closing. All right. Screen time make your closing versus remarks. Uh, me? If yeah, we're talking about tell. the greatest character of all time, character development is important in that. And he has already admitted that Creed Bratton does not have character development. Because they weren't able to make the spinoff, they weren't able, it's left to the ambiguity, and that's great, that's funny, but that does not lead to a good character, and we're talking about the greatest character of all time, that's Ron Swanson, look up any quote from Ron Swanson, you'll have a good time. All right, thank you, Ben. Tell, close the remarks. If we're talking about quote, quote, quoting, we can go just as far with Creed. If we're talking about quoting, it's an even match almost. 
But if we talk about screen time versus quotability, Creed will win in that. But that's not the conversation. But if we want to make that a conversation, he will win. Your whole conversation is about Ron Swanson is more quotable, but Creed, for the time that he was on the screen, is more quotable than Ron Swanson. Also character development. That's important in my argument. Okay. I think y'all both made some really good points. Um, Thank y'all all for giving your your full list on these debate topics. Um, we'll have our first winner announced soon. Um, thank you guys for having me. But uh, I would go ahead and say that the suspense building. Oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think Ben 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 won. Thank you. Yeah, let me say a few things on that. Ben did pick out all of these topics. No, so Grayson I think picked the, out some. Grayson picked out some. <laughs> this one was totally you, right? I think I did. Uh, I think this was... No, I, this, this one was been, you for sure. This might have been Abby, this, but I mean... Well, but no, that yeah, still doesn't... Like you, was little, why does that affect? Because it was random. Because you already knew about it, the Creed spinoff show. I it feel was like that, topical. It, because you knew of this it background was a topical information, debate. blew it up. Yeah, I mean, me. you, you can you can pick it... Yeah. You, you guys not, can pick. No, you guys bias. can pick them all. The, no, the no, no, no. That's bias. We, I, if if we're going to do the the research debate, then that's fair game. But knowing the thing, knowing the topics beforehand, and already knowing well, some to of be those fair, off the cuff things. That's, that's just something I, I knew that I would have known that if it was if I had known it. If you had just popped it in and you were the one that brought it, I would have already known that. It's not something that I well, I've seen the office like twelve times. I mean, okay. Well, congratulations, Ben. Yeah. It was a fun Good time. Good job, Ben. I will say, I think it was I would I Good whoever job, got Creed there would have lost. I don't know how you win with Creed. Yeah. Well, that that's the whole thing we were talking about. Yeah. Like this is a topical debate, and that's okay. Like we've proved that in a topical debate in this scenario, Ben out argued us in the eyes of the moderator, which is the point of this situation. And I think it makes for a great template for a future podcast. I think this is a lot of fun. Um, I definitely, I thought this was a lot of fun and I would want to do it again just because it's fun and I will be interested to see what like people think about it. Uh, I'm, I hate the way that Grayson kind of had to sit out there at the end, but that's perfect why we should do it again. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that'll just, it'll make us do it again. Cause I'm not going to let you guys say what you know i'm just not gonna let you guys have it i gotta i want another shot so if you want to see this more uh if you want to see another round of this let us know send us an email dumb thick at gmail.com no dumb thick podcast podcast at gmail.com uh i am at ben plays tuba grayson at grayson underscore wilkins at tell sheeler brandon what's yours uh, Brandon Moy 97 okay. on Instagram. Is there anything left? Like what, what do we think? Like let, we can just vibe. Like we've been going for like an hour 45. I don't, you know, I think we're done vibing. Now. You think we're done? <laughs> oh, okay. Go, <laughs> we've been vibing. Okay, well. That's why I tried to wrap it up 40 minutes ago. Uh, all right. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. You're Hopefully okay. I did it fairly. Yeah. I hope no thanks one's upset. Coming. I hope no, no viewers are upset. No, we're good. Yeah. I you think did, we're good. You did great, bud. All right. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Thank you thanks so much. Thanks for being unbiased and fair. We love yeah, it. I, That's I, what we need. I try. All right. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Craig, will you shut up, man? Get out of here.